All right, hello YouTube. In this video, we're moving right along with our deep dive into my new sequencer, Uda. We're gonna take a look at this wormhole patcher, which is one of the most exciting features of Uda. It allows you to reroute the notes in your sequence based on conditions that you decide. You can create structure or you can create chaos with a little bit of creativity with the wormholes. So let me just kind of clear my sequence and let's record in um, a new one. So let's set the direction back to forwards. Set this to eighth notes. Let's bring down our tempo just to kind of get the mood set here. So what I've got is some arpeggios and let's use the wormholes to kind of maybe route things around in some interesting ways. So like I said in the overview video, every step has a wormhole. Every wormhole has a source, a rule, a destination, and a normal step. So if we just tap steps, we're going to essentially update our source and this information here will be populated with the settings for that source. So let's take step four and let's route it always back to step one. You notice this button is staying lit. That's because in the previous video, I enabled this persist menus and modifiers setting. So with this persist menu setting enabled, the wormhole buttons are latching buttons and you have to tap them to disable them. With this switch disabled, it's a press and hold like a momentary button. That's actually how I prefer it. So I'm going to have it that way. So let's hear what we have. So we can see we're always going back to step one. Let's uh, see what kind of rules we have to work with. We have one X, through 7x. And what those rules do is that means that, you know, say you're one on 6x, that means the wormhole will succeed six times. It'll go to the destination six times, but on the next time it will fail and go to the next step or the normal step. What two out of two uh, through eight out of eight mean is that the wormhole will only be activated on the second of two times through, or the fifth of five times through. And then we have some probabilities. So, you know, 10% would be the wormhole will only go to the destination 10% of the time. And we also have ones that depend on the previous condition. So last and not last, uh, this is similar to some of the electron style trig conditions where to look at whether or not the previous wormhole succeeded and do or not do what that did. So let's use a conditional one, a uh, probabilistic one, let's say 50% of the time. Ooh, although you notice, I gotta be careful. I'm here on, on source one, so I need to actually go back to source four. I see that that rule is still always. So now let's set this rule to 50%. set up a few more. So notice it's always going back to nine. Let's do one X. Let's, you know, maybe step 18, let's route it to step three. Let's do that, maybe 25% of the time. Let's 
Let's take 20. Take that to 17. A third out of three times. So we can create structures that take a long time to play out and it's really easy to make things that you're not really sure what they're going to end up doing. Um, and that's kind of where the semi-generative uh, capabilities of OODA come in. So the only thing that we need to talk about now is a normal step. So first off, we notice that the direction kind of dictates the, the general sort of movement of the sequencer. Uh, and what this normal is referring to is that if we fail to go to the destination, we're going to go to the next step as is determined by the sequencer direction. Okay, so if the sequencer direction is backwards, the next step is actually the one before it, right? Okay, but you know, it's all, it's all worked out, okay? So we do have the ability to override the normal step though, and that allows us to create like kind of a fork in the path, if you will. It allows us to create repetition, but still have kind of encapsulated loops. So let me actually show you what I mean. So let's take step 12. And I'll notice that the destination uh, is going to step 9, 1x. That means on the time it fails, it goes to the next step. But what if I want these first eight steps to be kind of a perfect loop? Well, in that case, we'll set the normal to be step 1. So now watch what happens. So we repeat, and then we go back to step one, which is the normal step for 12. So now these eight steps are completely isolated from these eight steps, and I can just tap into those by queuing up a step. So if I set 28 to 17, always I have two completely independent loops that I can tap between. Except I've got 18 going up there some of the time. So a lot of fun you can have, okay? You can even create an A section to your song and a B section to your song. You can have parts conditionally going to other parts some of the time. I'm really excited about this wormhole feature and I hope you like it. I look forward to hearing what you make with it. Use the hashtag Uda Sequencer if you share any music you make and just have a good rest of your day making music. In the next video, we're gonna look at the voice panel and I think also talk about these four action buttons. I'll see you later.